Hi, my friend, it's Pat Sloan here, and it is scavenger hunt day. So what are we going to scavenger hunt for? If you looked on your calendar, on the day, you'll see a little pair of scissors. So today I want to see your scissor collection. <laughs> I know some of you have like two pair of scissors, and some of you are like me, and you have quite a few more. <laughs> So I did a little gathering up of the scissors here in my studio. Oh, as I'm doing this, count how many I have. See if you're right when I tell you here at the end. First, we'll gather the scissors out of here. And they're just in the top. And these are primarily the little scissors. All kinds of small scissors that I often will put in project bags or use in photography because they're pretty. Here is my Paris, the Eiffel Tower scissors. Everybody needs Eiffel Tower scissors, don't you? Of course you do. I've got some unicorn scissors somewhere, but I have no idea where they are at the moment. So I have to actually hunt those up. Okay, so that's the scissors in here, and there are none in the other drawers. There are just other things. So two containers here. I'm gonna take these over and put them on the side shelf where I'm going to show you more scissors. Okay, there's those guys. This one stays out. It has a bunch of bigger scissors. I have one project container right now. This is it, and there's a pair of scissors. We'll put them here. Over on the rolling cart. This rolling cart stays here all the time. So there are scissors in here. One, two, three, four. Yeah, four scissors in there. The rest are rotary cutters. So these guys will all come over here. Oops. Okay, so now there's probably some other scissors up here. Let's take a look. Yep, I've got a pair here. And then I know there's a super cute pair in this bag that Melissa made me. Melissa is one of the moderators in our community, and she made me this really great project bag. Let me just pull up and try to do this one-handed. She made me this great project bag, and let me get the cute little scissors out of it. Because, you know, you have to have scissors in all of your project bags. All right, now we'll go see the big scissors, the big scissor drawer. Here in my studio, drawer Ta-da! so this one has some rotary cutters more rotary cutters and there's also scissors in here so let's get all the rotary cutters out yes i use them so all of these here we go I'll put them up here Whee! these are ones i don't use quite as much for whatever reason these are my first scissors so there we go awesome I don't know where I do not know where the unicorn scissors are so I had to look for them because if they're not in here that means they're in like some sort of project bag somewhere which who, no what is that here they are no yeah here they are my unicorn scissors because we should all have some of those so this is my scissor collection, and today on the scavenger hunt, you are going to pull out your scissor collection and take a picture of it for me. All right, ready, set, go. All right, I found two more. These are by my sewing machine right now, and these are with the current cross stitch, and there's another pair with the current cross stitch. The other one I forgot to get in the other basket because I've got the small journal one and the bigger one going, so that makes 47 scissors and i'm sure there's probably a pair or two that might be with a project that i'm not that i use in photography or something like that and so let's round it up to a nice even 50. 50 scissors <laughs> and there's still more fun ones i'm sure i must have now i would love to have a collection of red scissors red handles that i have one tiny pair oh that's not even in the count so Putting it up to 50 is good. I just remembered that pair is in here and it's super tiny. Oh, there's the black pair. There's the super tiny black pair that I have with a little uh, protector on the end. 
Um, so, oh gosh, where is the red ones? Ah, here they are. Oh, there's another pair in there with the red ones. <laughs> <laughs> the red ones were a gift and they're tiny little stork scissors. See, I need all red handled scissors, but every time I go looking, the red handled scissors are like really pricey. And then this is another pair of teeny weeny little scissors. Oh my goodness, look at that. <laughs> they have their own little sleeve. Okay, so that might be up to about 52 now. <laughs> ah, crazy. Okay, I can't wait to see. You gather up yours, show them over in our community page. It is going to be a glorious day of scissors, and I'm going to be Im immensely envious of your scissors, especially if you have some cool pairs. Though Those are what I covet, the cool scissors. You know, like the Eiffel Tower one that I showed you, you know, like, you got to have them. They're just so neat. All right, what else? So on the other day, if you were listening to my chair squeak, <laughs> I think, and I know a few of you mentioned it, that's <laughs> like your chair is squeaking. I knew it was squeaking. I was just hoping it wasn't showing, coming through on the uh, audio here, but it did. Uh, so the chair is finished. It is, it is not squeaking anymore. So if any of you live with an in-house engineer, you know that uh, getting things fixed is uh, an interesting process with the people that you live with because they have the skills uh, and but you but it's all about timing you know i don't know if you have that same feeling i do but it's all about timing because if you tell the in-house engineer something needs fixed uh, more, about 99% of the time it will be fixed that moment whatever they are doing they will drop it and they will come and need to fix it that means you need to be prepared when you mention it that you will drop everything as well to help or show or whatever needs to be done or give up your space like i had to give up the chair when the engineer was going to fix it so here's a picture of my squeaky chair being fixed by mr greg <laughs> <laughs> the moment that I mentioned it needed fixed. Actually, it wasn't quite the moment. The first time I couldn't make it squeak again and he couldn't make it squeak again. And then the next day I went to sit down on it, squeak, 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 squeak. It was like a massive amount of squeaking. So it's done. A little bit of oil, <laughs> chair's fine. <laughs> All right, the other day we had the word of the year and I just ignored it that day and I thought I'll move it over a day or two because um, it, I wasn't ready to kind of think about it. So today I will think about it a little bit. The, my word of the year is space and uh, I did really well um, January and February with space, having a focus of space, uh, creating space. March is a different story. Right now I am not focused on my word at all <laughs> for space. Um, it just there's just too many other things that are, are taking my attention and and a lot of times um, when you're working with your word particularly if you're doing Allie Edwards class the instructors and Allie herself will talk about how you could possibly you think about your word and use it for kind of what's happening in your life at the moment because sometimes what's happening you can incorporate that word space so I I need to um, sort of reboot my thought process for March and see what I'm doing because I think maybe what I one thing I did was kind of spend like a couple of days there sort of getting a bunch of projects done you know off to the spa or just to a completion point where I could put them away for for later you know and that was a space uh, a mental space creating event for me and so so I, I'll go with that <laughs> I'll go with that and we'll see what else I can come up with for March all right my string bean is the last one for this row so this is number um the day 12 so we have six and six in my rows i'm doing that layout ah so we've got the panda bears today and i brought in some of the pieces other pieces of the the center so these are the centers on some of them with the flamingo and i thought you know i can bring those in on the light round on the uh, you know the the one that has all the different colors and so I thought that was good. Now, what I'm going to do is actually sew those two rows together. Put the block on, sew the rows together. I am not fiddling around with them later. At this point, I am actually doing color thought process as I'm doing them now. So I have, when I go over here to build tomorrow's, 
I will bring some yellow in because even though there's one kind of yellow there, there's yellow over here, there's one, two, three. So I want to bring some yellow over here and then maybe bring in some orange. So the next one that I do will have some yellow and orange in it. And that's kind of how I'm thinking of them as I go along. I also have all the centers, the next six centers uh, picked. So I've got those, I just have to pick them up and, and go. I don't have to think about them. It's great, huh? We're almost halfway through March. Can you believe that? Yeah. And so many of you are doing great with your block a day, your string bean blocks. So it's so exciting to see them. Um, I like that sometimes you just show like a group of them that you've done. I think that's awesome. It really is fun to see them together. <laughs> that's the cool part. Okay. I have got uh, the, oh, I wanna remind you. Okay, there we go. <laughs> So I want to remind you that the um, layer cake coupon is out uh, so you can get your layer cake for quilt day sewing and I'm you know going to do the Saturday in Paris but it's going to be Saturday night on the dark background like this and that's the one I'm going to use and there was a lot of um, a lot of you think I should do the chunky star and a lot of you think I should just do the regular star I mean the chunky plus sign and a lot of the star is basically half and half. You know, I didn't see, although a lot of you like stars and it is a bigger quilt, that one. So, and it is really pretty, but kind of leaning to the chunky plus signs and then uh, doing some sort of border because uh, it's, it's faster. I think it's a faster one to make. And like I said, I don't have good uh, amount of time to devote to it this month because one of the things I'll give you a sneaky, sneaky peek. Um, my friend Wendy Shepard, remember we did the elephant stomp? Wendy's a designer of that and many other things for my fabric lines. She designs patterns for them. Uh, <clears throat> she has a new thread collection and this is her dishes. Look at this, she collects blue and white dishes. She's got gorgeous and she's a beautiful photographer. And so she's doing a tour with her thread collection. Let me show you the inside. Yummy, yummy. It's both 50 weight and the floss. So you get to try both of them in the beautiful shades of blue. And so I am doing a behind the scenes project to uh, show, show this off and I'm going to do something with my birdsong fabric. Uh, so I'm very excited about that. Yes, because the birdsong will be out uh, in the spring here. So yay. <laughs> I wanna show you real quick two other, two other things. There is a really cool, Lori Holt designs all kinds of tools and nifty things. And she has this, uh, I think she calls it a stitchy stand. I'm going to try to show it to you here right below. There we go. I'm going to take this out. So this is the stand. See, this is where I found the one pair of scissors. So this stand has, uh, it's, it's foam and it's got a base. And it actually can pull open if you wanted to lay it flat like this for, you know, like storage or something. Um, but it has a bunch of pockets, pockets here, pockets on the end and pockets in the back. It also comes with this bag, which can, is exclusive just for this. It is made just for this. You can't buy the bag. But what I like is I think this will be great for the sofa because then I can put the pattern in here. And Melissa, when she made me that uh, zippy pouch, and she made me this um, that you put the threads in. Let me see, your threads. Yeah, see, isn't that cool? So actually that fits really nice like in here. You can put your scissors, whoops. My bow has got it falling off the table. There we go. Put your scissors in the end uh, or in the front. But I could put like, like the floss on the little um, cards could go in here. So anyway. I think it's it's pretty nifty and for me I'm going to try it on on the couch I think that's the place that it'll be um, it'll be fun for me to, to use it there because when I sit on the couch I don't um, I don't want to take like the bamboo stand that I normally use because I think that that you know that I can't sit that on the couch but this is really nice also you can put it on your lap Kimberly Jolly took it on the plane <laughs> I saw a picture of her with it on the plane and my progress, of course, my progress. Here we go. I'm working on the flower now. Ah, oh, they're so cool. I love those flowers. That's, I think they're the, the and, and as I'm stitching them, I'm still like, oh, I love these flowers. It's always something good. <laughs> All right, one last cute little thing I have. I've got, I'm gonna call it block bingo. <laughs> 
I've got all these cutoffs from the words to live by the last one that I did. I had all the cutoffs and I just, I needed something mindless to do. So I just sewed them and pressed them. And now like, what do you do with these? Okay. I'm going to make a little mini block and you can take one of your design boards and then just, you know, I don't know why I call it block bingo, but it just seemed like a fun, fun word, but you can just put them down on here and design something. So I thought, what if I did something that was a star? And then if I put all like the star points, um, the, the, the problem is I, you know, I, I told later, well, I can probably cut a few squares. Like if I wanted to put squares, I can probably cut either with just plain white squares or squares from this fabric that's in the kit. Like I'm, I'm sure that I can cut a couple of the tiny squares. I'm not going to lose lose too much. So this is, so there's like a little star, but then with, what about these? So these, I could actually put them like this. There's a lot more of them and I could play around. And then these block, this block, once I'm done, I could either like make a mug rug. It could go with my, um, like a label on the back if I wanted. Let's see, there we go. Make that a point. Make all of these have a point out here like this. Ah, this is cool. There we go. One, almost one more. Whoops, not right. There we go. And then what I need would be some of the, this white, I just sneak it out of the kit, really be very frugal. And there, this would, no, that's not, is that right? No, that's not right. No, there we go. There we go. Now it's right. Yeah. Okay. Look at that. So now, and then, so if I make this, then I have a block. So these are basically one inch squares, one, two, three, four, five, six. So it's basically would be a six inch block. And I have a free block from the leftovers. You can't beat that. Can you, you can't beat that. And this is something I will now sew as I'm sewing other things like, you know, so I'll start and end with these little pieces and then I'll have a free block. That would be a really, really pretty little mug rug. You could either add a little piece of fabric to the side or just maybe um, just use the mug as a mug rug as a self. I use those a lot. I can't reach them here, but I use, I use little ones like that for a while. And then, you know, you spill something on them, they're grungy and, you know, but also I could just keep it in with my blocks that I have, my extra blocks and sew it into something later. Okay. You are going to <laughs> show me your scissors. And I might just go and take a picture of all the ones I've been able to find. <laughs> so I can share it in the community page and at the community tab here at YouTube. Uh, so watch for that today. <laughs> I love you. Mwah. Thank you for being here in this loan zone. I will see you online. <laughs>